all worldviews can be broken down into these categories. The third is naturalism. Naturalism as a concept of the denial of the existence of God. And most sciences now are written from this worldview. Naturalism assumes that the reality consists of material universe operating according to natural laws plus nothing else. There's no divine being. There's no God. So what you have that is happening in sciences is the natural force of things. The survival of the fetus. The natural selection of things. Friends, then what complicates this issue is the world religion. Religion is a system that you can associate with all these issues, by the way. It is a religion of beliefs that attempts to define the nature of God and how human beings can understand and interact with the divine. Any system of belief that prescribes certain responses to the existence or the non-existence of God. To me, if a person does not believe on a deity, that person still has a religion on a, on a strict sense theologically. Why? Because to deny the existence of God is first to assume his existence. I'm a systematic theologian, so... Those people would say, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in that. Because the mere fact that they say that they don't believe in God posits that they actually, in some point, also believe in God. Because you cannot deny God if you have not assumed the existence of God. This argument in the existence of God is called the, if I'm not mistaken, teleological argument. You have the argument design, anthropological, cosmological, teleological analysis. Friends, in all of this, where does Adventist theology of division fix in? Let me share this, just a quick review. The core of Adventist education, the core of Adventist Education is defined by Adventist worldview. There's something unique with our worldview, not simply because it's a faith-based worldview. But Adventist worldview is, uh, if I'll be allowed to say this, it's more perfect than other worldviews. That's my bias. Okay? If you don't agree with me, is uh, forgive me. And when we look at Adventist education now, I'll be quick with this. I'll just summarize the things that I've placed here. When you look at Adventist education, because this is not my business, I've included this and decided to place this because I like all of you to understand that IFL can happen not simply because you try to connect with the verse. Those are those are okay approaches. There are many approaches to IFL. But when you operate in world views, it has more effect to students. Okay? Let me explain. There's what you call a quadrant of Adventist education. When you look at quadrants of Adventist education, this talks on purpose, plan, practice, products. In slide. It's like a teaching plan, okay? So when we talk about purpose, purpose is what is Adventist worldview. The next quadrant is plan. How can our curriculum reflect this worldview? See, 
It's not about how you will have a text. To, that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not saying do away with prayer in your classes. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there's an approach in IFL that is on the level of the cognitive level that your approach to them is you're changing actually their thought patterns. So, to become an activist teacher is no joke. Because you don't simply teach the subject area wherein you have your degrees and licenses and specialization. Because in activist education, you teach all of this filtered through the scripture and the spirit of prophecy. As we've studied uh, in 